special team. Uh, I always say that there are certain teams, if you look at the last four years, that have a DNA of a Final Four team, that they would have veteran guards, NCAA experience, uh, efficient defensively and improving offensively. Uh, a guy at the end of a game that can close out a game. They've got multiple guys that can do that. And uh, a toughness about them. Uh, so I think they're really a, a special team. Obviously, you'd like Ayala and Wiggins to shoot better, more consistently. And it seems like they are now. Uh, but they have a really good team. And uh, the game in East Lansing was phenomenal. It was, it was like three different games. I mean, first half, I thought that Maryland punched him right in the face, got the glass, defended uh, with a purpose. You know, force someone else to try to make a play, and you know, Michigan State didn't have an answer. The second half, Michigan State Watt stepped up and made some plays, and they got out in transition. But at the end of the game, I called my guy Mariano Rivera. I mean, Anthony Cowan was he was phenomenal, and how they used him. Like you know, if you remember the game, I mean, you know, he got a one three off a drill penetration, a little bit over help, and they kicked it out to him. He knocked down that three on the left hand side, then he knocked down the three in the corner with Darrell ripped it back and got in the lane and Watts over helped and he got a, a three there but you know, that's good coaching because you, you know you're basically making the defense make a decision if you don't help off a of Callan in the corner then Marcel can get there and get to the rim and if you don't help on the drive uh, then you've got a dribble penetration and rebound opportunity so uh, I expect just a great game a great atmosphere to fighting Van Pelts I'm sure will show up in full force uh, which is going to be exciting uh, and this is just a great venue. I mean, it really is. Uh, I joke about it, but this is, you know, Coldfield, this was a great venue, and then there are other new great venues uh, that reek of tradition and uh, have tremendous ownership. And this is one of those new venues that uh, just is a, is a special place. Uh, so uh, I'm excited about being here. This is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on capitalsportsblog.com and terptalk.com the number one rated maryland sports podcast since um what you brought up Cowan's heroics in that first game um he his last two games he hasn't had his best games of the season got some foul trouble struggled shooting a little bit when you were a coach what would you say to your point guard and, and your senior leader um going into a game like this coming off a little bit of a rough stretch you do one of two things you bring in and you just pull some tape of him playing at a high level showing him make big plays at the end of games uh getting others involved. But then I think you also talked about, like, you know, you're not going to be just defined by making and missing shots. I mean, like, he's defined by his leadership, his toughness. Some words have 127 straight starts. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would say that he's the heart of this team no matter what. And obviously, Stick is probably the soul. And I would just continue to empower him. And it, I, I'm not sure as a senior he needs to be, but uh, he understands what's at stake and he wants to do the right thing. And you just continue to, uh, and I think he and Mark have a great relationship, which is, you know, we had Mark on our podcast this week. I'm sure he was really excited about the outcome of that. Um, and, uh, and, and to me, uh, that, that relationship is so strong that he will empower him and make him feel good about, uh, you know, his play and how well he played the last time. I mean, let's face it, I mean, he was terrific. And I, I think the interesting thing about Anthony is that he picks his spots. You know, he, there's a time to get others involved. There's a time when he knows the light goes on where he's got to be a little bit more assertive. But it does, he never forces it, which is rare for a senior that's played this many games and had this much success. It's, it's really impressive to me. And they, their whole team, everyone kind of plays to their strengths, which is really impressive to me. And Seth, you were here in the preseason. What stood out to you to the team then, and what in your mind has you know, changed and evolved about this team since then? Yeah, I, I think that they know who exactly – I don't know if it's changed. I think they know exactly who they are. I was actually the, there the day that they started working on a little bit of the zone, which kind of is – you know, it's kind of a – you know, it's like going to the bullpen. It's, it's an off-speed pitch. It's something that you have in your back pocket to maybe a, a tempo changer, which I think is – is good uh, you know you always want to be able to have something else uh, I think the biggest thing is that that they they seem like they really like each other and, and to me I, I say this all the time the month of February you're only as good as your locker room and I think you know in a way I know they had some guys leave at semester 
But that, in a lot of ways, solidifies your locker room because now you got everyone pulling in the same direction. Uh, you know, in the month of February, as you try to make that run to win a championship, to get ready for the NCAA tournament, if your locker room is on the same page and there's great trust and belief in each other and there's no static, then you can continue to improve. And I think that's what this team's done. They've continued to improve. And uh, uh, I think that's the difference is that you know, they were, they're not where they were. You've seen them during the course of the season uh, get better, and that's what you want. That means that they're all bought into each other. And, uh, they know their identity, and they play to their identity, but they're also growing. Coach, when you were here before the season, we spoke about the fact that Maryland plays speed ball as opposed to Big Ten being tough. As to that raise any problems, you said no. Sometimes it's better to be different. Yeah. Can you talk about how Maryland's five-out offense has sort of taken the Big Ten by storm? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think Maryland plays a style of basketball that fits their personnel. Coaching is all about putting guys in position to play to their strengths. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, like, you know, you can say we're going to play Big Ten basketball. If your personnel doesn't fit, quote, unquote, Big Ten basketball, then basically you're trying to fit, fit a, a round peg in a square hole. And what Mark's done is basically said, all right, who are we? How do we win? What's our identity? What's our strengths? And then as long as you can impose your system on the game, that's – that gives you an advantage. And what they've been able to do is opening up the floor. And actually, that's where their biggest change is because now you see Stick shoot more threes, which now when he shoots more threes, what it does is it opens up more driving lanes. And now you can have Daryl playing downhill or you can post up someone in a mismatch. Uh, but I, I think, to me, coaching is all about figuring out your players' identities, their strengths, and then putting them in positions to play their strengths and then imposing that system on your opponent. That's kind of like the art of the upset is, you know, can you own the tempo of the game? Uh, you know, can you take away the other team's best players? All those things. Well, I think what Mark's been able to do is he's taking the group of players he has and then molded a system that fits them and now forcing other people to match up with him, which puts a lot of pressure on other people in a lot of different ways. And then they, they have so much versatility within their lineup. I think that's that's important, I, they, uh, and they have so many different matchups they can go to. In fact, I mean, they went. You know, this would be a question from Michigan State, or right? who are you going to put? If you're going to put Aaron Henry on on uh, Anthony Cowan, then all right, now you got to decide, all right, who are you going to put Cassius Winston on? Well, if Cassius Winston now has to guard maybe guys that are downhill drivers, who can put him in foul trouble, or post up, or guys get to the offensive glass, that's the chess game that goes on in, as you're game planning. So that's something kind of like the game inside the game that, you know, you, you can watch tomorrow. Right, the, thanks, guys. Thank you.